Hello, tea friends. This is Barb Belly of Barb's Tea Service, and we are back at On TV Studios for our podcast. After a brief break. After a brief break, exactly. We're going to talk about that little hiatus. Yes. But I am here with studio engineer Arm Candy, Chris Gully. Mm -hmm. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hi. Glad to be here. Great. I am glad to have you here. And, and. and this is our 12th podcast. So many good things come in a dozen. Donuts, <laughs> bagels, scones. You're right. You're right. Um, mm -hmm. Bakers. <laughs> yes. So I, I'm excited about it being number 12 because mm -hmm. this is also part of our steeper by the dozen yes you know we love that that's part of our book series mm -hmm. so it's it's quite an achievement mm -hmm. so i'm gonna say cheers and we're gonna be talking about a lot of things today uh -huh. a lot of ground to cover as usual yes <clears throat> and we're gonna go back and finish up our trip to vienna yes and then we're gonna talk about an afternoon tea place in northern michigan mm -hmm. And then talk a little bit more about the uh, the cream tea mm -hmm. and a southern tea. Yes, there's there's a lot. Oh my gosh, there's so much. <laughs> talk fast. <laughs> yes, yes, and it is uh, National Cream Tea Day, mm -hmm. and also the third Downton Abbey movie has been announced. The date, the screening date. I'm so excited. <laughs> I knew you would be, and that's coming up in September of 2025. Mm -hmm. All right, but first tea. Okay, so today's selection is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Not really too significant to our topic today because, as I mentioned, we're going back to Vienna. We're going to talk about the Sasha Hotel, mm -hmm. and I am completely out of my Sasha tea. For those who are watching, I'm going to show this tin. That's a tragedy. It really is. However, for those who need to know, it's on their website. Yes. You can still purchase it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So since I was out of that, I went to a kind of a fun different tea here. This is the 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 t full name is Te Dessage from Demon Frer. We need to work on our French. <laughs> yes, I think there's going to be a few mispronunciations this podcast. Yes. But so this was a gift from our favorite New York couple, Matt and Jenna. Mm -hmm. And they were in Paris earlier this year and they brought back a whole sample case. It's, it, the packaging is beautiful. I'm yes. going to show this to the camera for right. those who are watching. Mm -hmm. And also, it came in this really lovely packaging mm -hmm. all right there's a four in that set yep. so this one is well, i'm not going to say too much about it and we'll just sample and then i'll, I'll explain what's in it you kind of give me your thoughts chris oh okay here we go um i will tell you it's a blend of of black and green okay all right that's good, that's good uh so um for me i'm picking up uh somewhere between almonds and hazelnuts so kind of that 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 uh, kind of uh that taste to me so nutty but on the sweet yeah, end of it right right yeah not not bitter right for sure no i i think that's a great assessment mm -hmm. because it does have bergamot oh okay which we know is in earl gray right but there's also floral petals mm -hmm. ah, in there all right and I think the hazelnut might be the vanilla. Uh, There's a bit of vanilla in yes. there. Maybe okay. that's what you're thinking. I think so. All right. Okay. So this tea has quite a history. Mm -hmm. Damon Frere. That would be the brothers Damon mm -hmm. or Damon. Mm -hmm. And it has its roots back to France in the time of King Louis XIV. Uh -huh. So that's a long time. It is. And we might do a whole podcast just devoted to that. Well, we should save it for our 14th podcast. <gasps> oh, I like that. All right. That's, <laughs> right. that's great. Okay. 
Let's do that for the lucky number 14. Yep. So that's a long time, but not quite as long as we have been away from the studio. No. Not centuries, but just yeah, a, a couple bit. weeks. Yeah. And we were up at our up north place mm-hmm. that we affectionately call Pemberley Pines. Yes. Which kind of started off as a, a bit of a joke and then kind of ended up being what we called it. The title. Yes. But not the place. Oh, right, right, right. That was always yeah. serious. Yeah. So, yes. <clears throat> and you can tell it's right. still, I'm still dealing with my allergies. Yes. So, pardon me. Yes. I'll okay, here a we go. Bit more tea. Okay. Right. So we were up north at Pemberley Pines and you had actually likened it to Sean Brun and Versailles. Origin the origin stories are similar. Yes. yes. Started out as a hunting camp. Yes. And then became this beautiful palace. Exactly. <laughs> which we reside in half the year. Yeah. Okay. So wanted to go back and just talk a little bit more about our trip to Vienna because mm-hmm. we did talk about our, our visit to the Schönbrunn Palace, right. home of the Habsburgs, and this was part of our Blue Danube cruise a mm-hmm. few years ago, right. and we had a free day. Yes. So, as I recall, you and my brother Ed kind of went, found your own museums that you wanted to look at. Right. Because they have a lot. They do. And then I was with my sister-in-law and my cousin, and we mm-hmm. were kind of shopping and grazing through mm-hmm. Vienna. Mm-hmm. And so what was the museum that you were at? Uh, well, I wish I could remember. The, I think it was their, uh, I think it was uh, their uh, national museum. And um, so uh, uh, just as an aside, of course, uh, this is a, kind of the uh, end days of the COVID situation. Right. And one of the um, unusual uh, things was, uh, Basically, we had Vienna practically to ourselves, and right. and this museum I went to, which I'm sure is a very busy place. I I, I had the run of the place by myself. <laughs> okay, <laughs> pretty okay. much. Yeah. Okay. So that was pretty unusual. But but one of my uh, uh, one of my uh, guilty pleasures is when we go to these places. I always kind of end up um, if they if the museum has. Um, uh, I guess Western martial arts, ex- you know, exhibits yeah. like suits of armor, weapons, mm-hmm. uh, um, flags, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's to me, it's just, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting visit. I know Paris has has got a, a lot of these, and uh, I certainly, uh, I, I think my first exposure to, to going to a place like that was uh, uh, my 1975 trip to Paris, uh, way back when. And we went to these places, and I was uh, absolutely enthralled with it for <laughs> some reason. But uh, you know, the suits of armor are uh, uh, quite uh, remarkable. They're, in a lot of ways, um, uh, works of art in, in a in a uh, very weird way. <laughs> no, no, I can appreciate that because we also did a little bit of that when we went to the Tower of London. Right, right, and exactly. They, and they had all the suits of armor, some crazy stuff. I know, I know. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So you enjoyed your your I, little time I your did. time there. Yeah. So as I recall, I was coming back through town. We had stopped at some uh, lovely places to to shop, mm-hmm. and the plan was we were gonna meet you for lunch in the in downtown in the marketplace, right, at right. Vienna. Mm-hmm. So we estimated we would be able to meet you up there from when we touched yeah. base about ten minutes. Right. Right. And serendipity stepped in. It did. For me. <laughs> <laughs> so we were walking along and we came to the Sasher Hotel. And the Sasher Hotel is? It is the place where they sell the Sasher tort. Wow. So, and I, did I mention that yeah. probably is Sacher? Yeah. But all yeah. right. So, Sasher, we, we go, I said, oh, we have got to go in here because Vienna is known for their Sasha tour. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Lovely little chocolate fudgy mm-hmm. treat. So we walk in. I am just blown away by just the aromas. Yes. And it's beautiful. Uh-huh. So we get in line and I brought several small pieces of Sasha torts to take home. Mm-hmm. And also I brought that tea for those who need to know. Mm-hmm. And we ended up being there for quite a long time yes 
And so I think because we have fine friends on our each other's iPhones, right? You could see that the time was ticking away. Ah, I was monitoring, <laughs> of course, uh, in the spirit of uh, you know, of uh, rolling with things. Uh, my response to that was order more beer. <laughs> You're a trooper. I am. Ah, yes. That's okay. That's what I do. So we ended up at this Sasha Hotel longer than we had. No. anticipated because we hadn't planned it but mm-hmm. anyway we brought all this stuff back and i so i brought these sasha torts home for our, our kids right. and, and some relatives and i would say i was probably the biggest fan mm-hmm. some of them thought it was a little too sweet yeah but it didn't need re- refrigeration no. which was amazing yeah. made it through the, all the yep. plane travel. trips yep. and all the tra- yeah all the travel so kind of got me thinking where did this Sasha tort come from? Mm-hmm. And do you know where it came from? Uh, a Sasha? It did. All right. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so it originated in 1832. Uh-huh. And we have a prince, Prince Mantranek. I'm probably yeah. not pronouncing that correctly. But anyway, he was holding a big event. Mm-hmm. And he needed this. He needed a great dessert for his guests. Yes. His top chef falls ill. Terrible. Terrible. It was. Yeah. So who's left in charge? The 16-year-old apprentice mm-hmm. named? Sasha. Yes, right. Ron Sasha. All right. And you know what? The prince was really worried that he was going to be embarrassed. That I'm sure, and the, uh, the uh, consequences of that could be awful. Yes, if I were evaluated on my bad desserts, I, I'd be long gone. Wow, wow. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so this Franz Sasha not only comes up to speed, but he excels. He mm-hmm. He's just, this is a hit. Yep. It's court approved. Yes. That's how it's deigned. Yep. And it's a mixture of chocolate and butter and mm-hmm. apricots and vanilla. And mm-hmm. that, that signature. Yep hard chocolate budgie shell it was a hit it was a hit so the the hotel be, uh, was the who, who founded the hotel was Franz Sasher's son Edward huh. and so they kept that brand brand of luxury right and today you can still go there stay there mm-hmm. maybe that might be something we could do yes pick up some more tea yes and also uh, so that, and they continue to sell the Sasha tort. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of neat. But I, just a side note on this prince: mm-hmm. he wasn't born a prince. He was what appointed? He or? was appointed. Okay. Yes. So he was appointed by the emperor because of um, his so-called great successes. Although historians yeah. are debating yeah. that. Okay. But one thing that was kind of interesting or you might say not very interesting yes. he was said to be the most boring man in europe at wow. the time okay and he actually boasted that he could bore <laughs> he could bore men to death wow wow yeah <laughs> I, i'm sorry my mind just kind of wandered <laughs> what were we saying <laughs> did this prince have a podcast yeah <laughs> okay Okay, so anyway, that kind of wraps up our our trip to Vienna, uh-huh. and like I said, hope to be back. Yes. Okay, so we were talking about we're we're going to come back and talk about our our trip up north, mm-hmm. but today we're going to celebrate a couple of UK imports. Yes. One of them is the Downton Abbey third movie has been. The, the announced announced yep. as far as when it'll be in the studios for us to come and view yes that will be in September 2025 okay and what's kind of interesting and I'm putting this out there for anybody who wants to do a Downton Abbey afternoon tea mm-hmm. talk mm-hmm. and have Barb's tea service yep. present yes we're already starting to get booked for 2025 I think somewhat of yes. anticipation of this I know one of them is in another state so how about that? Watch this space. Exactly. Thank you. And the other UK import that we're celebrating today mm-hmm. is it's National Cream Day. National Cream, Cream Tea, Tea Day. Day. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's 
uh, again, something that they celebrate in the UK. Mm-hmm. That's a variation of afternoon tea. So what's what's the difference? So you know when we have the afternoon tea, right? We have the usually the three tiered tray, right? Okay. Scones, sweets, and savories. Right. With the cream tea, mm-hmm. we just have the scones, and it's served with either cream or jam. Okay. So why would you decide to do a cream tea versus an afternoon tea? Is it just a, a kind of a more of a break or something it's, like that? Yeah, it's it's a choice. And you know, if you're going to do an afternoon tea, usually they t- that takes reservations yeah. or a bit more planning. Sure, sure, sure. But you can go in just to have a break, just mm-hmm. have a, a tea and a scone. All right. And pretty much any time of the day. Okay. There's some dispute as to always the controversy oh. scones, but there's some controversy as to when it actually came about, but probably in the regions of Sconegate. Sure. Uh-oh. Devon yep. and, and Cornwall. Uh-huh. So anyway, this is something that you could, we, we've seen as we've yeah. gone around England, right. a lot of venues just post cream tea. Yeah. You, know, you know, you can go in there, get yeah. a scone and a cup of tea. Yeah, it's, it's a refreshment. It is a refreshment. It, it, uh, it's kind of a post-lunch thing. If you, if you, got, uh, if you need a nosh and right. tea, then there you go. Right. So <laughs> something <laughs> after you've you know, depleted your energy at the museum That's right. or at the Sasha Hotel. That's right. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So last week we uh, missed, we weren't in the studio because we were up north. Right. And we were staying at our Pemberley Pines. Uh-huh. And on Monday, mm-hmm. I went and met up with my great friend, mm-hmm. longtime friend. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say old because it's not old yeah. friend. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, not in age, but in yeah. term of friendship. Yes. Years of friendship. Right. So we met up. She lives on the west side of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Our place is on the east side. Right. So we met up in Petoskey yes. at the Inn at Bay Harbor. Yes. It's beautiful. Right on the shores of Lake Michigan. Mm-hmm. And we had stayed there before, but we never had afternoon tea. Mm-hmm. And I love this whole vibe of the the hotel. Mm-hmm. It it really kind of brings out the the old time right. hotels like the Grand Hotel. Right, right. It's expansive, mm-hmm. it's white, mm-hmm. and just luxury, mm-hmm. that vintage feel. Yep. So they offer this afternoon tea. Uh-huh. And when we went up there, they don't have the the tea spot that they have is not facing the lake. Uh-huh. But they make up for it in a couple of different ways. Okay. So it's it's on the second floor uh-huh. and it overlooks the lobby. Yes. So you have beautiful chandeliers yeah. and that. Well, that's not, uh, so in, in uh, various tea venues, um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they're, that's not unusual that they're located sometimes in, actually in the lobby area and or near the lobby, uh, Hotel Townsend. There was that place in Washington, D.C., right. for example. So that's kind of par. That's right, actually, because we were at the, the Willard. Yes, right. In, and we had tea in the lobby. That, right. That was a standard right, right. Uh, thing for some of these luxury hotels. Right. And that's where the term lobbyist came from. Aha. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay. People would meet. I don't know if they were always having afternoon tea, but. <laughs> they should have been. <laughs> they should have been. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. So this this hotel, though, isn't that old. Mm-hmm. It's only 26 years old. Wow. So if you multiply by that by two. Yes. That still isn't as long as I have known Loretta. So oh, you wow. know we've gone back quite a while. Uh, a day or two. <laughs> right. right. So when we went there for tea, I, I'm going to say I would highly recommend this mm-hmm. place because the service is great, the food was great, mm-hmm. and our server was Zena. Uh-huh. Outstanding. Spelled with an X. Spelled with an X, yep. right. And... When we first sat down, one of the first things she said to us is, this is an afternoon tea, not a high tea. Ah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That was just beautiful to hear that. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yes. So she knew the difference, the distinction, and my eyes lit up. And I said, oh, this is great. I knew we were in good hands. So Very good. And sometime we'll talk about that. Uh We'll talk about the difference of afternoon tea and high tea. Very good. Okay. So... That was our our trip north. That was how I spent one full day. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. after we left 
the the hotel after Laura and I left the hotel. Mm-hmm. We went out, sat outside on yep. the deck. Then we took a little leisurely drive to Charlevoix, walked around. Sounds fantastic. Oh, and we stopped and had a little snack along the, the Lovely. lake. Lovely, yes. And then, but I think that contrasted a bit to your Monday. Um, I had a different kind of day. What happened? Uh, <laughs> so I had to take a little trip to uh, pick up uh, a golf cart, of all things. Mm-hmm. And um, it was uh, a hot, hot, hot day. Mm-hmm. And uh, my poor little trailer tires, uh, one of them decided to get a little tired. Uh-huh. Play on words. <laughs> oh, and uh, blow up on me halfway uh, halfway home, so I had to uh, uh, kind of deal with that in a hundred degree day <laughs> by the side of the road. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that was, I, you know, I, everything got fixed. And I was back on the way, but uh, it was uh, it was a long day, so it wasn't quite the uh, luxurious, <laughs> uh, peaceful day that some others had. On that yes. Day. So not a lakeside view, no, like the no, side of the road. No, 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 no. <laughs> Chandeliers. No, no. no. Nothing like that. Okay, so that was the that's, but it is happy ending. It oh. is repaired. Yep, it's doing great. It's doing great. Yeah, it's back at the palace. It is Pemberley Pines Palace. That's right. <laughs> and every palace should have a golf cart <laughs> in my kingdom. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so that was, we had a great time. We we did put the tea garden mm-hmm. in in order right. and did a lot of planting. So we're going to be sharing some of those yep. stories soon, but. Uh, we have a tea garden yes. at Pemberley, and it's coming along very nicely. Our our tea garden actually has another name too. It's the Garden of Cosmic Speculation. Just <laughs> in case you're wondering. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can you can speculate, or you can have tea, or you that's, can do both. That's right. Okay. A lot of options. Yep. All right. So we have a little bit of time left. Right. And I did want to. Talk about an afternoon tea that I had today, or today. Yeah. Move on. <laughs> it was this week. It was yeah. two days ago, so not too far off. Yeah, yeah. And this was a really fun yes, event. Yes, yes. It sounded and, great. Oh, it was it was wonderful. So it was a Southern-themed afternoon tea. Uh-huh. And this was the creation of friend and tea assistant volunteer yep. of Barb's Tea Service, mm-hmm. Pam. There you go. And she is from the South. All right. She grew up in Atlanta and New Orleans. Right. So, and she's an amazing cook. We have been uh, uh, beneficiaries of that skill. We have indeed. Yeah. And so she had talked about doing something like this, and I thought it was yeah. great. Mm-hmm. But then she pe- pa- uh, paired up mm-hmm. with... Uh, another friend of ours, Rosemary. Mm -hmm. And Rosemary also had roots in the South. Her grandparents, her maternal grandparents were from Arkansas. Right. And she'd spend summers there. Mm -hmm. So she had a lot of ideas as well. Yeah. So put those together. Uh Uh-huh. And along with with, uh, Rosemary's sister, Charlene, Mm -hmm. they put together this amazing menu. Mm -hmm. So what's a Southern-themed afternoon tea? Uh... Some southern related things, I'm guessing. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So instead of scones, we had grit cakes and uh-huh. biscuits. Mm-hmm. To the savories, the tea sandwiches, there were pimento cheese sandwiches. We love pimento cheese. Oh my gosh, we do. Yeah. And actually, one of one of our listeners said that she knows of a place that serves pimento cheese sandwiches only. Does heaven exist? <laughs> I know. I want to go to there. Yeah. And then for dessert, we had things. Uh, a couple of the items were a buttermilk pie mm-hmm. and then something called a sad cake. Oh. But it's not It's not describing some of my baking efforts, oh. if you recall the <laughs> sticky toffee pudding incident. I think. Well, it was, it was an effort. <laughs> it was an effort. <laughs> and I think. I think I'm still chipping off some right. sticky toffee pudding out of the oven. Anyway, the sad cake gets its name from the, how it it performs as far as in the oven. Mm-hmm. So it is it when it's baking, it rises mm-hmm. and then it slowly deflates. Oh, so yeah. it looks sad. Yeah, 
We've had days like that. We have had many days, <laughs> especially when I'm in the kitchen. Ah. But it was delicious yes. and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So that was our Southern-themed afternoon tea. And as I've mentioned before in previous podcasts, I think this is going to trend. I, I think it should. It really should. You know, going back to things that you like or part of your heritage, I want to do a Scandinavian uh -oh. themed we're, afternoon tea. We're pushing it. Oh, we can do Trinary toast. Yes. Limpu bread. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We could do, I, I don't know if we'd have to add a little bit of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. But so I, I think it's yeah. just something that's got a lot of people thinking. So yeah. we'd love to hear some of your ideas. Excellent. On that too. Very good. Okay. And I think we have covered mm -hmm. most of what we wanted to talk today. Right. Talk about today. I did want to mention, though, that again, another plug for Barb's Tea Service, mm -hmm. Downton Abbey Tea Talks, Bridgerton. Yes, they are yep. flying off the shelf. Yeah, and speaking go. of shelf, okay, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> we talked about the shelf life of tea right. in our, our last podcast. Yes. Uh -huh. We've heard from some readers that that inspired them to do their own editing. Editing. Yeah. And taking my own advice. Yes. I went through the the my tea cabinet. There was a flurry of activity, <laughs> to be sure. And I was a little surprised at some of the expiration dates. Yeah. But knowing that it <laughs> wouldn't taste good, and I wouldn't want to serve it to guests. No, no. So we kind of heeded our own advice. There you go. So. Nice. We not only yeah. talk the tea, we, but we throw we, out the tea. We toss the tea. <laughs> toss the tea. Oh, that's even better. All right. Okay. So, all right. I think I may hear that sound. Here we go. Oh, I think the tea kettle is telling us it is time to wrap up. Wow. Number dozen. <laughs> so, Okay. So we want to thank everyone who's been listening, yes. watching, getting us to number 12. There you go. And also to On TV Studios for having us in the studio. Mm -hmm. And we like to, we'd like you to come and visit us at barbsteeservice.com. Yes. Or email us at barb at barbsteeservice.com. Uh -huh. Love to hear your suggestions or any kind of feedback. Yep. And as we like to say at Barb's Tea Service, please Stay tuned. Very good. Okay. 